Hey guys, today we're making a video on the topic of how do I calibrate my Mini Moog. This is a question I get asked quite often, and it's uh, it's one of those things that it's kind of a loaded question because a lot of Mini Moogs do not calibrate. About 95% of the instruments I get through my doors do not calibrate, or they'll be close, and you'll bottom out a trim pot trying to get it in, and it just is out. So if you if your Mini Moog don't calibrate off this procedure, I'm going to show you then you more than likely need a good servicing uh, or you have something going on with your Mini Moog internally not just in the oscillator board but there's other things that can affect tuning so you may have other problems but uh, hopefully this will at least get you somewhere to where you know you got a problem and you can have it addressed either by me or your technician that you trust um, so anyways I'm going to first show you uh, the oscillator here I've got mine opened up and so this video is strictly for the version 2 oscillator board. How do you tell if you got a version 2 oscillator board? I'll show you. So the back cover, if you look here, you've got two uh, two holes per oscillator. So you got the range and scale, range and scale, range and scale, and this is for your 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 two your uh, oscillators here, and then your actual octave. So this will be a version 2 because you only have two trim locations per oscillator. If you have a Mini Moog and it has three holes right here with a fourth hole over here then you've got the version 3 oscillator board which is a completely different calibration procedure than what we have here uh, so I'll make a video on it later on when I get another version 3 in here I'll make a very similar video to what I'm doing here um, but to start with you can see mine's opened up you don't really want to open yours up you want to keep it closed up so keep your back panel on the reason for that is is you want to keep the thermal accuracy kind of within the chassis so leave it on for about an hour, and that gives the power supply time to kind of warm up. It doesn't get hot, but it does get warm, and it kind of fills this area with the heat. And then also make sure the room that you're calibrating your instrument in is at the temperature you typically keep it at. So if, you're, if your studio sets at, you know, 73 degrees, make sure you kind of keep, keep it in the room of 73 when you do the calibration. If you take this thing outside and you calibrate it like in another room that's, let's say, that's at 78 degrees, and you bring it to a studio that's 73 degrees, well, your tuning is going to be off because <laughs> it's just the nature of these things. Um, I explained the version 2 oscillator board. It's kind of like owning a carburetor, like a car with a carburetor. You always have to do little adjustments. It doesn't like cold weather. It may not like hot weather. So you're always finding yourself having to do little things differently in the temperatures, you know. Um, it's just kind of the nature of them. Where the version 3 oscillator board is more like fuel injection. You know, once you get it calibrated in, it's there. It, it pretty much holds it pretty well. So, you know, that's, that's just kind of the nature of these things. But, uh, it's so like I say, so have it on for about an hour. Don't take your back cover off. Keep your room at a, at a stable temperature that you typically keep it at. And I'm about to show you how I set the front up. All right, so I'm about to show you how to set the front interface. Before I do that, though, one thing you will need is you'll need a good strobe tuner or a good tuner reference. For this video, I'm just going to use my phone with a app on it. That's a tuning app, and it's just a strobe tuner, so it gives me the actual uh, frequency count. And it's old. I, I can't even get this uh, tuner anymore, but it's a really good tuner. Uh, but I'll show you kind of how I do this. So looking at the front panel, this is how you want to set it up. So make sure that your uh, tune it's set to uh, zero on your on your actual master tune. Set your ranges to two for all three oscillators. Uh, center your detune uh, pots for oscillator two and three. I set my waveforms to sawtooth, so set those to sawtooth. Make sure your mixer is full up here. And I usually turn off oscillator two and three. I focus on oscillator one first, and then make sure your filters opened up. Make sure all that's opened up so it's got all the volume you can get out of it. I usually also just turn down the envelope generator here for the uh, filter. And I usually set my decay time and my sustain, my sustain time full open. So I'll turn it all the way to 10. That way it'll set there and self-sustain for me. And then I can use a decay switch to, to mute. Going back to the oscillators, make sure your oscillator 3 control is on. So it has key tracking. Make sure your oscillator modulation is off. And that way you don't have any effects of modulation bleed into your oscillators, which can cause a detuning effect uh, as well. So do that, and then uh, I'll show you kind of the, how I do this. All right, so we're going to start with oscillator one. Something else I forgot to bring up that you will need is you'll need a uh, a number one Phillips screwdriver. 
that's actually what you'll stick those little holes in your back cover to calibrate. So you can see I've got my strobe tuner set up over here where you can kind of see it. And we're going to just start with oscillator one only. And I'll show you how to do this. So we hit the higher note. You can see mine's a little out, not bad. So we'll take our range. You can see I've got it pretty close there. It's never going to be dead on. Because you can see this thing's actually sensitive to the screwdriver. This being an early mini mode, it's a little bit worse than others. You can see I've got that one in the bottom. It's out. So we'll take our scale trim, the trim pot to the left. Now these do interact. So when you adjust that one, that one's actually still pretty good. But basically you'll just go back and forth. If, if this one goes out, you'll go back and forth until you get both of them where they need to be in the a reference. Also the frequency reference that we're looking for, if you have a frequency counter instead of a strobe tuner, you're looking for 3520 at the high A. The low A you're looking for 440 in the uh, footage too. So there's that oscillator. So you can see that one's in. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take oscillator 1 and we're going to set the footage to 32. So you can see it's a little flat on mine. So then what you'll do, you go down to your octave trim pot, that trim pot on the bottom, hit your high A, and so now we got it pretty close there. I'm not going to go very accurate because my back cover is not on, so I'm going to do this all again. So now you should have your high A reference, and your low A reference should be in. This is where a lot of mini mugs fail. <laughs> this is where I spend a lot of my time uh, in the restoration. So you can see my low A is in. My upper A is in. So there's that oscillator uh, one calibrated. So now what I'll do, I'll set it back to footage two. I'll turn on oscillator two. So now we're going to reference oscillator one to oscillator two. You no longer need really a, a strobe tuner or a frequency counter because now we've got oscillator one set. You can use it as your, as your reference for your ear. So we'll start with the high A. You hear mine's pretty close. Now when it's pretty close, I'll show you how I do this. So for oscillator two, I'll actually go to the detune control in the middle, the, the detune for oscillator two, and I'll uh, just gently adjust it. It doesn't take very much to adjust it, and I can actually adjust that, that uh, beating out. Now my mini mug's dirty. This is a personal unit, so it's a little scratchy on that pot, but uh That's pretty close. Now I hit the low A. You can hear it's out. So now I'll go to the scale trim pot for oscillator two. Now we go, it's matched to oscillator one. Same thing, I'll go back to A. And there we are. There's oscillator 2. I'll do the same thing for oscillator 3. I'll set it and I'll make sure my detune is in the middle. Now if it's really far out, like when you hit the high and you hear a lot of beating, uh, then I actually adjust the, the range. Like this one, you can hear it's way out. So I'll try to, do, I'll try to get as close as I can because it's really hard to get these rheostats close. That's pretty close. Now, I go to my, my actual detune for oscillator 3 now. I adjust it in. Way out. So I'll use the scale trim once again. To pull that in.
So you can see how sensitive that is. But I just try to get as close as I can with the scale trim or the range trim. And sometimes you have to kind of work them. That's probably about as close as I'm going to get it. So I'm going to go back to my front detune. There it is. And there we are. We're in. So then you can see, I'll show you real quick. Let me take the camera with the tripod. You can see just how little movement I had to make to my D, my D tune of Oscillator 2 and 3. You can see that they're still within the center. So you just, you just barely, I mean, you'll see how sensitive these are once you do this calibration. You, don't, you just have to basically just barely bump them to get that to quit beating in the high end. And then low A, adjust your, your scale trim. So that's how I do it. And then you can actually see now, I'll actually put this back on here. Tripod here real quick. And I can just kind of show you here. So the next thing that comes up is does your ranges work between the oscillators? If they don't, then you've got other problems. So if we take uh, this mini moke here, which you can hear my mini moke has issues at the keyboards. So we'll take this and go. some issues and that's exactly why it's here at the shop because this is my personal unit and there's some things I got to do to it to improve this uh, this tracking in the footages in between the oscillators so if you're if your mini mode it should once you do this kind of calibration your ranges should be pretty accurate between all oscillators if they're not then you've got circuitry problems so uh, but anyways I hope that helps you out calibrating your version 2 oscillator board mini Moog and I appreciate you guys watching and uh, one other thing too I, I did forget to mention is that before you start make sure your pitch wheel is in the detent that's something else I did forget to bring up but uh, hopefully this will help you guys out thanks for watching and let me know if uh, if this helped you out at all but take care so one other thing I just thought of here and I want to bring this up because my mind's kind of thinking as I go <laughs> as I go through this because there is a lot of variables in mini modes. If you've got a 72 mini Moog to 73 mini Moog, your footages probably will not work. And that's actually normal. Your footages will always be out. And that's actually one problem I have with this mini Moog. I did add the buffer board, but I hadn't done some of the updates. And the buffer board is the answer. So, as you can see on this mini Moog, it doesn't have two little screws right here. I bring this up quite often. If you don't have those two little screws, you don't have the buffer board, more than likely. And because you don't have the buffer board, there's nothing to set the constant uh, current for your switches so they actually the load changes between the shifting of the of the uh, 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 voltage divider circuitry causes offsets in the frequency so that's a uh, that's an issue that uh, I do see with mini modes from 72 to 73 74 around I'm gonna say around 4000 serial number you start seeing the buffer board installed from factory so just just a note so if you have an early mini moke it's actually kind of normal for your footages not to work right <laughs> that's just kind of how they are um, but also i want to show you this too real quick so i've actually made a chart here of the frequencies that you should see as you go through the footages of the oscillators so this high reference low a you, you can look at these if you want to these would be more uh, uh, desirable if you have issues with uh, the circuitry and the keyboard but basically the high note as mentioned earlier is 3520, low A is 440 in the 2, and then we'll go down to 32 because these are the two that are the most important when you're doing this calibration. So the high A in 32 footage is 220 hertz and the low A is 27.5 hertz. So that's, that should be your frequencies roughly there that you're looking for in your tuning. But uh, also too, just to show you 
right here too. This is what we're looking at, the range and scale here of this oscillator. And of course these trim plots, they're not even in existence. This is actually, the schematic's messed up. On this, on this, or the, uh, not the schematic, but the layout is actually messed up in this manual. These are not associated with anything on this oscillator board. So ignore those two, tri those three trims right there. That's actually on the filter board. Those two are actually, I think, for the earlier oscillator design. But here's the version uh, 3 oscillator board. This is the one I was telling you that you have a lot more trim pots. And you can see you got shift, octave, scale, high end. So uh, that's just a look at the different board layout there. But anyways, hope this helps you out.